Hey everybody, my name's Andy, and today we're going to play a little bit of Sid Meier's Railroads. I know there have been a couple people waiting around for me to do something with trains. Well, now's the time! So this is a game by Firaxis, uh, whose head is Sid Meier, and they are most well known for the Civilization series, uh, which is a very good series of games, I enjoy that a lot, where you, start, you basically build a country from scratch um, and make lots of choices along the way, and we will play that sometime. But they've also made a lot of less well-known games, games you don't hear people talk about very much, and a lot of those games I still really like. I, I really like what Firexis does. Um, and so this is one I really enjoy, and I thought I'd show you guys around because I think more people should know about this game, so let's jump in. Alright, so we're just going to start up a new single-player game. This game actually has multiplayer, uh, believe it or not. And this is a game about building a railroad empire from scratch. So I'll show you all the tricks and tips you might need to know to uh, to do that. Uh, first thing we're going to do is select a scenario slash map. Um, we're going to do Southwest US, I think, because it's kind of the, the easiest one. And that'll be uh, an easy way to show you guys what we need to do. But they've got different parts of the United States. Um, Great Britain. They've got a France map, Germany. And then some multiplayer maps that are just kind of uh, weird things they made up. Also, southeastern Europe, not a real place. The double cross of mountains, so a fire axis map. So, um, besides all the maps being different, having different layouts and different terrain, uh, each scenario has its own objectives, and, and those you need to complete in order to win. So we're just going to start with this easy one, southwest U.S. Um, now, let me direct your attention down here to the bottom. Um, we've got a couple important options to choose from. Difficulty level. Uh, the base difficulty is Investor. You can also make it harder on yourself. Uh, usually I play Financier or Mogul, making it a little more difficult, but not terrible. Uh, I'm sure Robber Baron is, is tough, but putting the difficulty level up makes everything cost more for you, and uh, you have a little less money to start with, so it's, it's harder to get going, and if you're playing against uh, computer players, they might get an edge on you. But we'll, we'll just go with uh, Financier, I think. Um, Usually I play with three AI players, but we're just going to do one for this, just kind of as an example. And then finally, routing difficulty. You may not understand what that means, and I didn't at first. Here's what it means. This, of course, is a game about trains and laying down track, right? So if we have easy routing on, and you have one track with two trains coming at each other, with easy routing, they're just going to pass through each other like ghosts. If you go up to medium, then they'll still go through each other, but they'll slow down. So it's, you know, not ideal, but they can still go through each other. Now, if you do hard routing, which is what I like to do, they behave like real trains would, and they both stop and go, uh, we're not going to crash into each other, can we have some more track, please? I like playing with the hard routing on, because then you really have to think about where your tracks are going, and how many trains are going in an area. We'll get into all that. One thing I forgot to mention was there's a, a lower difficulty called train table mode, which actually I think doesn't even... you have like unlimited money and you know you don't really have to do the objectives, it's just kind of for playing around with trains, so that's a nice addition. Alright, I think we're ready. All aboard! Alright, here we are at a new game of railroads. The year is 1850 and two recent events have changed the shape of the United States forever. California has joined the growing nation, stretching the country from ocean to ocean. The second is that gold has been found in those new territories. Yes, so uh, me and Jim Hill, this other train guy, have shown up and we're going to make lots of money. Or that's the goal, anyway. So, before we get started, let's take a look at our objectives in the victory screen. Uh, to win a game of railroads, you have to complete all of these objectives. And they're broken into different groups. Um... And so you kind of are on a time limit to complete each group. So we've got 50 years, basically, to do these first two objectives. Build a certain shipping lane, and then ship some gold. Um, and once we've completed... You can do the objectives in any order, but usually we'll want to do those first, because if we run out of time, then we'll lose. Uh, then we'll have to have these two done by, uh, by the time the year catches up to here, and then we'll have to finish all the objectives uh, before time runs out to win. All right, so let's look at what we're starting with here. We have one train terminal, or depot, and a little bit of track. We've got no trains. This track doesn't lead anywhere. That's all you start with. And our competitor, Jim Hill, he's also on this map somewhere. I, 
I'm not even sure where he is, but he's starting with the same stuff. So, what we're going to want to do is get a train going so we can start making some money. Once we got money rolling in, then we can worry about the objectives. So, let's look at our city here. This city has no goods. There's nothing in Bullhead City. What a horrible place to start. What's with that? We gotta find some good cities. Oh, here we go. Las Vegas. That's a good city, so I hear. So let's lay some track. Usually I start in a pretty good city, but Bullhead sucks. Alright, so I'm gonna build track so that it goes through this green circle, because that shows the area that we can build, like a train depot. Boy, that's expensive. Uh, well, we gotta do it. There we go. So we built some track, it made an automatic tunnel, that's nice. And then we have to put a depot in Las Vegas, because uh, that's where people get on and off the train, that's where we load up goods and all that stuff. So, build a depot. Now, these are connected, but they're not really going to be able to interact, which I'll explain in a second. I need to find another good city. Alright, I think I've located another city with some people, <laughs> with some people actually living there, and that's Yuma down here. So it's a bit away, but I think we're going to try and build down there. Oh, I'm going to run out of money. Okay, so I'm going to go over here and sell stock in my own company to get a little money boost. Let's get the track all the way down. Oh, i got to sell more stock. That's okay. We'll buy it back later. It's fine. We need a good starting train here. All right, we got to build another depot in Yuma. Now we are ready to ship some stuff. When I'm looking at Las Vegas, you can see there's supply and demand. So Las Vegas has six people who want to take a train somewhere. They don't care where. Uh, they just want to go somewhere. And they've also got four units of mail that needs to be sent to somebody. <laughs> It doesn't matter where it goes. And then they demand certain goods as well. Now, looking down at Yuma, they also have people in mail, and they're demanding people in mail. So I think we're going to be able to do a little transfer of, of passengers and mail between these two cities. I was disappointed in Bullhead City because all they want is uh, cows and oil, which we don't have yet, so thanks a lot. All right, let's buy a train. You can see all of our depots that we own on here. So let's make a... what train options do we have? Just two. We got the 440 American, nice big engine, and then uh, some tiny... the Grasshopper and the Norris, tiny, tiny guys. We'll go ahead and buy the big guy, I think. And then we're going to start a route at Las Vegas. We're going to have that train take hmm, four passenger cars and two mail cars down to Yuma, and they, they have less people living there, so we're going to just take uh, three and one out of there. Okay, let's confirm that route. And now we've bought a train. Alright, they're going to load up all the passengers and mail real quick, and we're going to get going. Here we go. Ah, oh, look at him go! And all of our passengers, all the mail. Now, I didn't have our train take all of the passengers and mail out of Las Vegas, and there's a reason for that. The more cars you put behind the train, the slower it's going to go, right? Because it's heavier. And also, those supplies accumulate over time. So if we take everything out of a city, then by the time the train gets back, we might not have enough passengers and mail to, uh, to take out of, the, out of town. So we want to leave a little bit behind so there's something to pick up when we get back. Oh, look at it, it's so cute. Alright, so this train is going to go all the way down to Yuma. Here it comes. It's going to drop off our passengers and mail, and then it's going to pick those things up from Yuma, just like we told it to. For every car we deliver, we make a bunch of money, which of course we need to spend on uh, more trains and more tracks. Now they're changing the cars around to match what we put on the route, and they're going to load it up again slowly, because we just have these low-level depots. And there they go. And the train will go a little bit faster back to Las Vegas, because it's not pulling as much. You can see that there's more people and mail in Las Vegas ready to go, so when the train gets back, we can keep the route going back and forth. So that is set up. We're going to be making some money slowly. A new train has been invented. The 260 Mogul. 
This one is maybe a little faster, uh, but it's better for pulling freight rather than passengers. So maybe we can get some use out of that. Let's look at Bullhead City. They don't really have any people or mail. They just want some cattle and some oil. So is there any of that around? There is a beef company just on the other side of this hill. Maybe we can deliver some beef over to Bullhead City. Gonna do a little connecting track here. We're gonna take it over to the beef company. Now, we don't need to make a full depot at just one of these resources that we find out here. We can actually just make an annex, which is cheaper. And that will allow our train to load up on cows. They're ready to go. Now, let's make it, let's buy a new train. Let's get one of these moguls. They're good for freight, right? So we'll have them start at the beef company, pick up six, six cars of beef, yeah. Take it to Bullhead and then just go back and forth like that. So here's our new mogul. Just got special little cars for the cows. Ah, so cute. Now our new train is going to take all those cows down to Bullhead City, which they want, and then you can see in processes Bullhead City actually has a factory or something that turns cows into food. So then Bullhead City is going to have food available that we could ship to one of our other cities. It's all about making the money. Here it comes. Now, I was talking about routing earlier. Both of these trains have to run across this one piece of track. Now, since our first train takes a long time to go back and forth, we should be okay for the most part. But if they were running into each other all the time, we'd want to switch the tracks around. There it goes. Back to pick up some more cows. Alright, let's look for some more business opportunities here. Bullhead is going to start having food available, which Las Vegas wants, so maybe we can pick that up on the way back. You can see our competitor here is loading up on oil. What else can we find? Yuma also wants cows, and we've got another cattle company nearby. So maybe we can grab that. There's also, what is this, a little bit of ore, but they don't want any of it. Let's do a parallel track, or a double track. Besides just coming off of our main line, we can do a little side-by-side -side action here. And then our trains won't run into each other, and it makes that nice little bridge. Okay, just a short track over here. A little cattle annex. And we'll buy another mogul. I'm just going to do five cars on this one because the cattle company is a little closer. I don't want to take so many cows out of there that they run out, you know, so we'll, we'll uh, take cows in moderation. Alright, Yuma can also process cows into food, so we'll have more food down there as well. I think we'll deliver a lot of food up to uh, Las Vegas. Alright, I got a notification that Blythe here, all they want is oil. And apparently the mayor of Blythe is offering a reward to whoever uh, gets them eight oil first. Now, I am basically blocking off my competitor here, so I think my chances are pretty good. Uh, but let's go ahead and connect them to some oil. They're right next to it. Blythe Oil Company, you guys own this oil. You need, But they, they need me to deliver it. That's fine. Of course, all rails have to come off of our network. You can't just start them in the middle of nowhere. What is this? The Pratt Bridge Trust Patent. Uh, I don't have very much money, but do I want to place a bid? I am right by a river. We'll, we'll bid a little bit. Um, oh, I don't have enough money to do it. Fine, Jim. Have it. I don't care. These patent auctions come up every once in a while, and they uh, whoever wins the bid out of everybody usually gets a discount on certain things like building bridges or building tunnels or maybe they uh, maybe they invent like refrigerated cars or something so whoever win wins the auction uh, earns more money from delivering food or something like that and, and I think uh, they get that boost for like 10 years or something so it's pretty substantial 
now. I've just received this newspaper. Um, Jim Hill set a speed record with his train. I don't care. Get out of here, Jim. And I don't need this patent. That's fine. Okay. I kept my money, so let's annex this oil. Depot in Blythe. And let's get an oil train going on here. Four cars to Blythe. Two trips, and I'll win that reward. Ah, oh, the profits of industry! It's so fun to watch. I don't think I mentioned it yet, but I know jack about trains. I don't know anything about them at all. Um, but I've always been interested in them, and I, I've always had fun watching them. Um, you know, I, anytime I see like a model train set, I love that. I love playing with train toys. I just think the idea is fun. Because they're kind of like flat roller coasters, right? And they, like, they're stuck on their tracks, they just roll back and forth, and they can pull uh, these giant cars full of goods. I think it's cool. And of course, they're really cute in this game, so I just like watching them. Yes, deliver those cows and make me money! Alright, let's take a look at this depot, because we've got some extra money. And you may notice that everything runs pretty slow in Yuma right now. Hey, I got the reward. $100,000 for delivering that oil. Thank you, Blythe. So, there's actually three levels of depots. You have to pay to upgrade them, of course. Uh, but when you do, everything in that city goes faster. Trains load and unload faster. They, you know, change cars faster. So it's great. Uh, we're getting a lot of activity in here. So let's go ahead and upgrade this to a station. That animation is great. And then we can upgrade it again, which we probably will later. Um, Las Vegas only gets that one train, so it's not a big deal right now. Ooh, are we going to have a little uh, routing problem here? Maybe. They both want to go on the same track. That's not going to work. Somebody's going to have to wait. So like I said, if you had easier medium routing on, this one right here would just go straight through the other one. But I like playing with it on hard because now I gotta think, do I really need to have a, a second track so it can go through, or is it okay to wait for a little bit? I don't think it's that big of a loss. But something we can definitely look at later. Okay, we've got some money flowing in now. Let's take a look at these objectives, because of course if I run out of time without completing them, we're gonna lose. So, first of all, build a lane, a shipping lane from Flagstaff to Phoenix and Las Vegas. So basically we just need to have them all connected with depots. We have Las Vegas already. Phoenix is down here in the southeast and Flagstaff is over here. So, what do we want to do? I'm trying to think where it would be best to build this track, because of course making big bridges and big tunnels is expensive. Um, let's do a little parallel there, and this will probably be expensive, but we're going to go over all this water. We're going to cut straight through to Flagstaff. Oh my. There we go. Big old bridge. That's fine. We're almost there. If we cut around this mountain, then we'll save a little bit of money. There we go. All right, new train unlocked, a 10-wheeler, a passenger train. It'll go faster than our, uh, whatever it was called. Uh-oh, stock market's down. Mayor of Barstow has a reward for the first uh, person to deliver four carloads of ore. Maybe we'll take a look at that if they're close. Got a big bridge now. Put a depot in Flagstaff. So that's two of them connected. Now we gotta get down to Phoenix. Oh my, that is quite the cliff. Oh, but Phoenix has has manufactured goods that I could pick up. Get out of here, Jim. I'm gonna <laughs> So look, this Phoenix has goods because Jim's been delivering oil to it, but I can just swoop in there and take those goods out and deliver them somewhere else. There's nothing wrong with that. It's the free market, baby. I don't have enough money to get tracked down there, so we'll just have to wait on Phoenix. What was the other one? 
Ship five carloads of gold. Oh, anywhere. I just need to get gold and ship five carloads. So where can I find gold? Halves cost to build tunnels. I sure could have used that five minutes ago. Um, I don't foresee that I'm going to build a lot of tunnels, so I'll let Jim have that one. Or actually, you know what? No. I'm going to drive up the cost. Yeah, bid on that, Jim. Alright, let's search for goods here. Gold! There's three sources of gold. One of them's past Phoenix. Oh, you process ore into gold. I forgot. Barstow wants ore, and they're going to turn it into gold. So I can get that reward and get gold in one fell swoop. Now i got to find ore. There's ore north of here. Okay, I can make this work. Here it is. Alright, so I'm going to lay a double track by the beef company. Run that second track up to Ore Town. Annex. And then run this second track around the mountain? I guess. It's cheaper than going through it. And we're going to run it right to Barstow. There we go. Depot. Awesome. I don't want the ten wheeler. That's better for passengers. Grab another mogul. And go from the gold mining co. Ooh, five. Five carloads at a time down to Barstow. Yes. In two trips, I'll get the reward for delivering that ore, and I'll have some sweet gold that I can take somewhere else. I love all the little animations in this game when they're loading up the cars and, you know, we got all these mountain cows or something. I don't know. Here comes my money! Alright, let's talk about a couple other facets of this game while I earn some cash, hopefully. Um, you saw earlier I sold some stock in my own company to get a cash boost. Uh, and Jim bought one of my stocks. Okay. So, of course, you can sell stock to get some money, and you can also buy stock in your own company. Um, you can see kind of our net worth here also. So, actually, right now, Jim is worth more than me. Uh, but I'm teaching also at the same time, Jim. Thank you. Ooh, I got the Barstow reward. Now, if I buy stock in my own company, the price of future stocks is going to go up, right? So that might prevent Jim from buying them. And you want to kind of defend your own company because if Jim buys all ten of the shares in my company, then I'm out. He owns my company now, so I want to avoid that. By the same token, I can start buying shares in his company, and once I own the whole thing, it's mine. And I can either take it over or I can just sell it. And usually, one of the final... Yeah, one of the final objectives in every scenario is to buy everybody else out. So that's something you got to keep an eye on. Um, we're doing fine. You can always buy stock in one of your competitors' companies, and then when they start doing better, then the stocks are worth more, and then you can sell yours to get some money. You know, you can play around with it, whatever you want. He sure is buying a lot of mine, though. And that's driving up the price. One other thing I haven't talked about. Not all cities, you might have seen, can turn one resource into another, right? So we look at Bullhead City, our starter. It says it can turn oil into goods and then cattle into food, right? That's because it has two special buildings. It has the refinery to process the oil and it has the stockyard, which processes the cattle. Um, now, these things are not owned by anyone right now, but they can go up for auction. I can say, we're going to have an auction for the refinery, and then whoever wins it, me or Jim, owns the refinery. And that means that any time oil gets delivered to this town, there's a cash bonus for <laughs> whoever owns the refinery. Same with the stock here. So if you find that you have one building, uh, one of these processing buildings that gets used a lot, try and own it, because then you'll get extra money every time it's used. I could actually try and buy the stockyard, and then every, every cow that gets delivered earns me extra money. Ooh, and I just said that the Yuma Stockyard 
got bigger. Oh god, Jim, get it! This is my town. This is my territory. Oh, he's running in here. Yuma got bigger. And now they want corn to turn into food. We've got a lot of food built up here. You know what? We gotta we've gotta adjust this train, I think. Let's Mayor of Tehachapi wants cornmeal. I don't care. Let's adjust this wrap. This train, first of all, we're going to upgrade it to the 10-wheeler a bit faster. Because it's a long trip. Then at Las Vegas, they'll pick up those things. They'll go to Yuma, where they're going to pick up... What are they going to pick up? Two and one, and then a bunch of that food that's sitting down there. Because I don't want Jim to get it. I... I made that food out of cows, and I want to get the money for it. Thank you very much. Now then, Bullhead also has a lot of food. But my train's full. I don't want two trains. We'll just go with that for now. What do I want to do with this Bullhead food? Hmm. I don't know. Something to think about. You know what? Let's upgrade the Las Vegas terminal as well, so that this thing can load up faster. Gonna go all the way to terminal, the final level. It makes transactions almost instantaneous. It's great. There it goes. Go, Ten Wheeler. Get down to Yuma and pick up that food that I made. Jim's going all out on the corn business. It's everywhere. Jeez. All right, we've got some money. Let's try and get down to Phoenix. Okay, depot in Phoenix. Once I have a little more money. There we go. All right, and that should be our first objective. Las Vegas Phoenix Flagstaff Line, talk of the town. Latest railway surpasses eating a meal without getting sand in it as most discussed topic in the region. All right, so that's our first objective. And then we still have 24 years to deliver that gold. And, oh, I didn't even notice we completed a later objective to have a net worth of five million, so we're ahead of the game on that one. All right, gold, gold, gold. We should have gold in Barstow now, we do. Who wants gold? That's my question. Does Las Vegas? No. Los Angeles wants gold. So we can definitely... Oh, that's very close. We can definitely do that. Here's the refrigerator car patent. 25% bonus for perishables. And I am grabbing all that food now. You know what? I want to win this one. Meanwhile, we're going to work on getting gold down here to uh, Los Angeles. Ten thousand more. Why won't it let me bid? Hey! Hey! It didn't let me bid anymore, I don't know why. Anyway, whatever, I don't care. Los Angeles, Las Vegas line passes through beautiful landscape. Was that an objective? It sure was. Look, I've completed the middle objectives by accident. But I still need to deliver that gold. How can I take advantage of this situation? Bullhead City now has people in mail. Hmm. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a double track past Barstow. Connect it on that side, and this other one is going to go... I need to connect this track to the depot we already have. Jim has initiated a bid on the Phoenix refinery. Oh, that's a lot of money, too, that I don't have. So Jim's going to win that, and then every time he delivers, what? Oil. He's going to get extra money. And he's doing better than me right now. Thanks a lot, Jim. This is supposed to be a teaching exercise. All right, we're going to double up here at Bullhead. And run that one. Connect to Los Angeles. There we go. Okay, now. Uh, we'll do a 10-wheeler. Gold to Los Angeles. Then pick up people and mail. Deliver it to Bullhead. 
where we pick up... Ooh, right, they've got that food. Perfect. Pick up people and mail and a bunch of food. Back to Los Angeles. Pick up nothing. Go pick up more gold. It's a weird route, but I like it. Wow, the gold comes with armed guards. <laughs> I've never noticed that. The 280 Consolidation! New freight train. Oh, $50,000 per gold load. That's great. And that was all. That was five for my objectives. So now I'm good on objectives until uh, the end of the game at 1950. What do I have to do? Build or purchase a power plant in Las Vegas. Right, so let's see if Las Vegas even has a power plant. They do. So I'd have to win that auction to do that one. You can see big cities also have empty lots where we can actually build new buildings. I think when you... I don't know if you build one if you just own it or if it goes up for auction. That I don't know. But if you're like, hey, you know what? I deliver a lot of oil to Las Vegas and it doesn't have a refinery. Let's make one. Cities get bigger the more you use them. Look, Yuma was really tiny when we started, and now it's almost as big as Las Vegas. As they get bigger, they they want more things. They they produce more goods. Nobody visits San Diego. What else do we have? Attain a net worth of ten million. Well, I'm more than halfway there. And then buy out Jim Hill, which. Uh, he is ahead of me. Oh, God, he bought all my stocks. Now that Jim owns all of the remaining stocks, I can't buy them one at a time. I actually have to buy them all at the same time, so I'd have to have $9 million to buy my own company. Thanks, Jim. Let's, you know, I'm going to buy some stocks in your company. You jerk. Here comes our big train, loaded up with those food cars. Alright, so we completed a lot of objectives, and I'm going to leave it there, I think. Uh, for the rest of this game, we have to complete those uh, those final objectives and then buy out Jim Hill. He does have quite a lead on me right now, because he hasn't been talking the whole time. But you just kind of keep expanding your rail empire, grabbing more resources, making more deliveries. Uh, you know, maybe buy some of those uh, refining buildings to get a bonus. Passenger delivery bonus, I could get that. Mm. Get out of here, Jim. You know, cities are going to keep offering rewards for certain deliveries. So there's always new stuff popping up and new ways to get money. Hey, I won that uh, I won that auction. So now for 10 years I get bonuses to delivering people. That's great. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed seeing a little bit of Sid Meier's Railroads. It's a game I really enjoy, and I feel like I never hear anybody talk about it. So I wanted to make sure that you got a chance to see it. Um, if you're a big train fan, or even just a strategy fan, it might be one you want to look into. When you're going up against three other people, the competition can certainly get fierce. Uh, and there's lots of choices you have to make about where your tracks go, what goods do you pick up, where do you deliver, how do you complete your objectives in time, because they can, they can definitely get tough. This is also a game that I put on to just relax sometimes. You get to watch the trains go around, uh, you know, deliver stuff, make money. It's nice and soothing. And, of course, there's that train table mode where you can just kind of make, a, make whatever rail system you want, not worry about it. Thanks again for watching. If you have any uh, questions or comments, leave me a comment below, and uh, I'll see you guys next time.